Greetings, here we go. Oh my gosh, it's not a Simmers morning skate, so to speak. It's more a Simmers summer skate, and today it's the Philadelphia Flyers, and it's some draft expertise with our dear friend, Russ Cohen. Russell? Simmer, how are you? I'm not bad. I'm in the hockey dungeon for the summer. I've been in the hockey cabin. I've been at the rink. Now I'm in the hockey okay. dungeon. Um. You are a beat writer for the Philadelphia, covering the Philadelphia Flyers. You are also okay. an expert on the draft and prospects. Mm -hmm. You work for EP Rinkside, which is Elite Prospects. You also work for a couple other entities. Please tell the folks where they can find you. Yeah, Locked On Flyers podcast, uh, Off the Post podcast, Sportsology.com, which has been around since 2000, and NHLDraftBuzz.com, which I just started about six months ago. Nice. But Elite Prospects, by the way, on the Elite Prospects site, please check out this photograph. Well, I'm going to throw this photo up right now. Look at you. Oh, my God. That is something special. That's like, hi, I'm Russ. Swipe. Yeah, it's a, it's a glamour shot. Yeah, swipe right. I'll make your dreams come true. <laughs> yep. All right. <laughs> uh, all right. Well, let's start. Well, well, first of all, we have breaking news as we record this this morning. The Flyers have a press conference today, a presser. What is the big news, Russ? Yeah, they're extending Garnet Hathaway for two more years at too much money. They are. So this is a it's a virtual press conference. They're not bringing yes. you in to, no. to announce that the 32-year-old fourth line right winger is re-signing a contract. Right. Well, you know, and what what the Flyers will tell you is, hey, but he played up on the third line last year. And it's like, yeah, because they're not a great team like Garden Hathaway should not play third line on any team. He's a, he's still a really good skater. He's a good penalty killer. He will get you some points. He teaches the young guys the way, and that's what John Tortorella likes. But at some point you are taking a spot away from younger players. He's not doing it yet, but it's going to get to that point. Right. He's actually a pretty good story though. He's a non-traditional, a great story that way. This is a kid who uh, grew up in Florida or was born in Naples yeah, which is like a retirement community uh, on the golf side and um, went to Brown University. I mean, I knew yeah. all American Brown lacrosse players way back. But hockey, I mean, if, if it's if it's uh, Ivy League hockey, it's generally not Brown unless you're. No, but, but I will say this. The last five years, Brown. Now, this is before Hathaway, but yeah. the last five years, Brown's actually gotten pretty good again. So, yeah. you know, but yeah. it, after you know, him. after him. But he's a testament to hard work and. It paid off, and the, the work that he did in, with the Capitals really got him on the map. Right. Uh, by the way, Brown is in uh, is in uh, Providence, Rhode Island, the, the state capital of Rhode Island. Uh, he went from there, and as you just mentioned, yeah, he's played 500. If he stays healthy all season, he'll he'll pass the 600-game mark in the National Hockey League. So it's a good story. Undrafted. That's impressive. Yeah. yeah, as we say all this. So, you know, what does that do for this Flyers roster? We'll get to their draft here in a second. Another name that pops up for me is Bobby Brink. Speaking of third line wingers, you know, a lot was made of this kid, second rounder in 19, Bobby Brink. Is he ever, will he ever live up to what seem like some pretty heavy expectations? Well, first, let's go for why they're heavy expectations. They're heavy expectations because they passed on Cole Caulfield. That's yeah. why it's heavy expectations. So, and they got Brink and York in the, in the end result. Yeah. So, that's why there's expectations. Okay. He, he really was good in college. Uh, he's staying healthy lately, which is good. He's feisty. His skating is ugly, but he does know how to get from A to B and he has a lot of skill and finesse. So he's kind of followed to Foley in a way that he could survive with his skating, but he has to score. Like he, if, if he's not scoring, he's not doing much else for you. Uh, so last year was moderate. And this year is a big year for him. Like, he has to produce now. If he's not going to produce, someone like Hathaway is going to end up taking that third, you know, third line job away from him. And then he's going to be, you know, occasionally scratched and put him in for an offense. If he doesn't do offense, give him offense, he's going to be taken out again. I don't think they'll send him to Lehigh anymore, but that's sort of where his role is. So this is a, a big year for him. He's got to score like, you know, 17 goals at least. 35 points to kind of be relevant for them. And if he's not, then I kind of wonder what's, you know, if he's not going to get tossed in a trade at some point. 
Oh, uh, I'm Minnetonka, Minnesota native, by the yeah, way. Yeah, yeah. Which, weirdly enough, I know a guy from Minnetonka who went to Brown University. How weird is that? Oh, there you go. Um, let's move. Oh, by the way, Lehigh, the Lehigh Valley Phantoms. Now they, I just threw up the 20th anniversary of our Philadelphia show for Maple Leaf America, and it talked about yeah. the Phantoms used to play at the Spectrum across across the, the street. It was awesome. I used to go to games there. It was so Unbe- good. It was unbelievable. Now they're what Al- Allentown? Allentown. Yeah, Allentown, it's far. Pennsylvania. So that's where the uh, AHL team is. Um, surely I digress. Let's move right up the right wing and and Michkov. This was probably the big news for the fly. The draft we'll get yes. into, but this was the big news of the summer for Philadelphia hockey. It's going to it's going to be the big news all year. Like it's it's not going to slow down. You worry about the expectations though, because you know just like Demidov, who eventually will come over to the NHL. All you have is the KHL numbers to go by with Mitch Guff, but he's a kid. And I reason I say that is like Kaprizov. Everybody kept saying, how good is this guy? How good? And I kept saying he's the best guy outside the NHL. But he also came over at like the age of 23, 24. Right. That's a big difference yeah. than coming over at age of 19, 20. So, you know, that's where we are with Mitch Cobb. And, you know, he had a good year with Sochi, but I don't know what he's going to be able to produce. First thing, he he's going to have to deal with John Tortorella. And by deal with him, just play um, – as much of a full complete game as he can. He had trouble doing that. He had trouble doing that um, in the KHL. That's why he wasn't on like the traveling all-star team at the end. And that's why he was loaned to Sochi. Like these are things that, you know, didn't get him to play for ska, you know, the big club. Yeah. So he's got to overcome that now. Now look, he's really strong, like physically strong. So you don't have to worry about his size. Excellent skater, great edge work, terrific in the offensive zone. Uh, But he's going to have to learn the ways of North American hockey. And he's going to have to learn the ways of John Tortorella. And so I'm trying to tell people, like, you have to pump the brakes on this one. You can't expect him to be like an instant Calder candidate, like, you know, anybody else that might come in at at an older age, like Kaprizov. Like he was, you know, it's it's a different story, you know. So I just. I'm trying to let him know it's 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 like that. It's not like he's going to come and score 75 points and John Torrell is going to clap every time he's on the ice. I think there's going to be some ups and downs for him, but we'll see. Yeah. Like we just it's all the unknown. He's 19 years old. He was the 7th overall pick last summer. He's a winger, everybody's jacked, and we'll see what happens. Uh, Torts gets it now though. Like I mean, he under he's going to have a little more. Year. I want to say there's one more thing though. There is there is one more factor with this that Flyers fans are carrying with them. And that is, they think he's like a rival now for Connor Bedard. And Bedard's got a bunch of a head start on him, right? So I I don't think that's fair to say that, you know, for a couple of years. Right. Because Connor Bedard just about showed us what he could do offensively last year, but not quite because he he did get hurt. He would have had like 80 points. Yeah. So we've got to, you know, you got to wait a little while on Mitch Cup. I just want to point that out to fans. And if they think the same things about Will Smith or Ryan Leonard, same thing. You just got to wait. That's all. I'd be, I, I'd, I'd be concerned about the Blackhawks uh, in terms of the way they're approaching things right now with that kid. Uh, I mean, I saw the Blackhawks a couple of times. There were like Phil Esposito length shifts. Yeah. There, there was no rhyme or reason to anything. It was like, let's get the kid out there. Oh, pl- play whatever you want. But yeah, let's but let's just say this there was on those no, Espo shifts, he was mostly in front of the net. He didn't yeah, do a I lot know. of skating. I know. Well, that's the thing. This was these were just long shifts, you know, coasted <laughs> around, eh, go right. for a little twirl. Oh, maybe yeah, I'll yeah. get the puck. Maybe it was a weird thing to watch. No, I heard that I heard that Bedard played no defense. Like I get it. They weren't good. No. They weren't good. So they they'll have to figure all that out. A lot a lot of work to do there, but a lot of work to do in Philadelphia. I'm not yes. exactly when we talk about uh, torts, you know, and some of the Vancouver fans who had him here for a year and uh, you know, <laughs> other places will be interested on, on the how it's all working out. But this is not Murderer's Row. The Claude Giroux era is long over. 2010 Cup. That was obviously they lost in the final to the Blackhawks. Um, very memorable. I remember sitting. In, 
upstairs at which bank was the rink named after in 2010 i can't remember. oh it could have been court no was it core states no i guess it was a bank um, i think it was after core states first union center first union that's what it was it was and yeah first union when caner was skating towards us going nuts i mean that was all fine but those days yeah. are long gone um you know, it's Couturier, it's Konechny, it's Morgan Frost, it's Farabee, Tippett. Um, Tippett. What, are we, what are we doing? Well, they tried to, Chuck Fletcher started this, and I was surprised that the Flyers kept with it. They they went with this strategy like, hey, we're making trades, we're only going to trade for guys like, you know, 23, 24, 25, nothing else. But what they started to do was just collect everybody's first round picks that they were anxious to get rid of or uh, didn't have, didn't want to sign. Right. So, so Tippett has done pretty well, but the problem with Tippett is, and I've been saying this for two years, he needs a shooting coach. If you look at his shooting percentage, it stinks. If he actually could hit the net more, he could be a 35 goal sky goal guy in this league. But if he, if he continues on the path he's on, he's never going to get to that. And so, there's that with him. There's still that promise. But again, the Flyers power play for the last two years, and it is kind of hard to understand how Rocky Thompson still has a job. Obviously, John has made sure that he does. But the Flyers power play for the last two years is the worst in the league. Like last year was the worst by far, like not even close. Yeah, hey, I and hate so, to say it. Tort, Torts has never had, regardless if it was him, when he was with Sully forever as his assistant in Vancouver, New York, never had a good power play. No. Um that's fair. Can't argue with that. No. But just... now it's even worse. Right. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like now it's the yeah. worst. Okay. So, you know, and of course, you know, you can make the argument. They might have made the playoffs if they had more play power play goals. Okay. But that was last year. The league's changed. All these teams have gotten better in the, in the East uh, and the Metro especially. So, so you look at them and so like Joel Faraby, right? I think Torts was a little underwhelmed with him at the end of the year. For some reason, though, Rob, Owen Tippett's 53 points are way better than Joel Farabee's 40. Oh, 50, rather. Right. So three-point difference, but yet Tippett had a great year. Farabee, not so good a year. Yeah. You know what I mean? Sometimes that happens on teams, and coaches do that. And so Farabee's been in trade talks, but I don't think they're going to trade him. And so he's got a chance, because remember, he had the same neck injury that Jack Eichel did had the artificial disc and, and, and I, considering all of that, he's done really well. Yeah. Uh, and there's still upside with him. Okay. Travis can uh, go ahead. Go ahead. Connecty is, you know, the best player on the team. He's finally staying healthy. Cause you know, he plays a feisty brand and he's not the biggest guy. The problem with Connecty is he's trying to get an eight year deal. And I would never give him an eight year deal. Couldn't do it. Not because I don't like him. Not because I don't like the production. I wouldn't give him more than five. And the reason that is just look at Jeff Skinner, those kinds of guys who rely on their speed, who could score. And when it starts slowing down for him, what happens to him? It's hard. It's hard to stay in the league then. Yeah. And they're just starting to try. And this year they're still, their caps bad, but they're trying to get out of this cap trouble. And yet now they're going to add another long-term contract. It seems it's not signed yet. So we'll see. Right. But that's the way they're heading. He's 27 years old. Right. And yeah. everybody, so here's the argument. And I've had these arguments with other people in the media and fans and otherwise. Well, Russ, an eight-year deal is only going to be 35. Look at Sidney Crosby. Yeah, but that's Sidney Crosby. Right. It, it's not Travis Konecti. They're different people. Right. So then it's like, well, why do you not want to give him eight years? Well, because I think with the feistiness that he has and the injuries that he's had in the past, it's going to catch up to him. Maybe like a Brendan Gallagher, like it's caught up to him. Why would I want to be in the middle of a contract with that? If you want him for like four years and you want to pay him 10, a ridiculous amount, I'd even be better with that than giving him eight at less than that. Simply because, yeah, if you want him for the first couple of years of Mitchkoff and then Mitchkoff kind of outgrows him maybe because he's slowing down, fine. But to, to kind of have him to go in the future, eh, it's a risky proposition. All right, we got to keep boogieing here, uh, Ross. Yep. So we got, uh, you know, we got the Garnet Hathaway press conference. Yes, up here, so big deal. On top of that, um, speaking of injuries, uh, Rasmus Ristolainen, he had the tri I think tricep surgery, yes. maybe, and he is expected to be back along the blue line come the fall. 
Is that we don't hear about it? We don't know. Okay, well, we'll wait and see. It's but... a very much an unknown. Yes, that is what they'll tell you, but mm. we haven't seen the guy play in a very long time, right? Yeah. So he so, might be. See, are we talking? <laughs> no, no, but what his effectiveness might be, or even readiness, because I think he got this done at the end of April. Yeah. So it's kind of like. I don't know. I can't tell you he's definitely going to be there. Like Eric Johnson just got signed, which was, again, one of those things where it's like, you got guys in the minors. Why are you doing it? But I think the other reason is because they're probably not sure if, how much Ristolainen can play because, you know, Eric Johnson's like, hey, I'm a seven here. Don't worry. I'm just, you know, going to ride out my career. But all of a sudden he's going to turn into a six yeah. if, if you know, Risto's not there. So, yeah. yeah. Hmm. Otherwise, the uh, decor is intact, what they had. Uh, yeah. Let's talk about the draft. We we, we talked yeah. about last year's draft. We talked about yeah. other prospects, but what did we think of the 2024 version of the Flyers' efforts? I'd say it was good, but could have been better. I think Jet Luchanko is a really good player. He's one of the youngest guys in the draft. He definitely is a playmaker, has offensive ability, is fast. But even though he's like a sturdy, like 190-something now, he's still not strong enough. Like when he played in camp, he still was getting stood up at the blue line by some of their other bigger older guys you know so in dev camp so he's got some work to do on that front uh he is going to be stuck in the chl for a while because of that age factor thing because he's young so we'll see how all that plays out if he gets in the nhl early i'm not sure uh but they left z Bouillon on the board and they left constantaneous on the board they traded down minnesota <laughs> was the one they traded with they took Bouillon right away uh, the Flyers said, well, we have a lot of those type defense been in Cam York and Emil Andre and everything. And I say, Poppycock, he would have been your best. So, mm -hmm. but that's okay. Mm -hmm. Like that's an organizational decision, right? And then Hellenius is an interesting one because he'll get to the NHL as a center before Jet Luchenko. Like mm -hmm. he might play in Rochester this year and get to the NHL at the end of the year or by next year. And so then, then the, the pressure is going to be on for them, for Jet Luchenko to turn into what they hope he's going to be because if Hellenius is in the league two or three years before Luchenko and is already presumably, let's say a number two center, there's going to be some pressure there. So this is their guy. They went for a particular type of player. And so we'll see. Uh, wildly throwing it out there in July, as we uh, look at the prospects and we look at the prognostication, this is a playoff bubble team once again in 24, 25. I think they're less of a playoff bubble team this year than last year. And the reason I say that, uh, it's not because Mitch Kopp's there. It's not because they re-signed Hathaway. They had Carter Hart at the beginning of the season last year for a while. Yeah. And say what you want, but that that means a lot. Sam Ersan had a nice season. Don't get you don't get me wrong. And I've watched him, you know, develop as a goalie. I still can't tell you he's the number one at the same caliber that Carter Hart was. And I think one of the big missing things here when people are talking about the Flyers is can Urson win like Carter Hart was winning, especially early in the season. I think the Flyers surprised a lot of teams who maybe, you know, took them a little lightly. We'll see this year. They're not going to take them lightly now. And now they have, you know, presumably a, a, a notch below in goalie goaltending. That could be an issue. So even if you feel the team is better, I can't tell you they're better in net. Well, goalies in Philadelphia. I mean, <laughs> we, hear, we hear other cities whine about goaltending and say they've had chronic issues. This is, it's been going on and on and on. It's the unfortunate ghost of Pelly Lindbergh. It's just never, you know, Hextall, Lindbergh, car accident, never have really figured it out. Well, Hart, they had it figured out with Hart until all this other stuff happened. So I they, we give them, we well, have to say kinda that. Had, they kind of had it figured out with Hart. And right. then, of course, he had the lull. He did. And who knows? Maybe that was related to something was going on behind the scenes. We're, he's obviously in deep, deep doo-doo. Oh, the yeah. 2018 Team Canada sex scandal deal yep. at one of four. And... um because kind of a legend in his own mind kind of guy when he came in talking to people that coached him early on during the during his time in the NHL so there's just a lot a lot of issues there so now it's Samuel Erson and it's Ivan Fedotov Fedotov yeah Fedotov, Fedotov it's Fedotov it. we thought it was Fedotov but we were all wrong of course it's always the it's always the mid, middle syllable that's the yes. rule to live by is the accent Fedotov 
So there's your goalies in Philadelphia right now. A lot of pressure yeah. on your, your, the on Samuel. Your, and and for Dodoff because he got paid quite a bit to come over after all that thing with the Russian army and never didn't look like he was ever going to come. And, you know, he only got to play in, uh, you know, a few games and it wasn't great. So there's a lot of pressure on him because honestly, I can't look you in the eye and I really can't anyhow, cause you're tall, but I can't look you in the eye and say that uh, for Dodoff is a true number two in this league. I don't know that. Right. Nobody knows that yet. We know what he did overseas. We don't know what he could do here. And, so now this is so again, you see what I'm talking about, like that, that that could hemorrhage some wins early in the season. You don't know. Yeah, problem. More of the same for the Philadelphia Flyers, it sounds like. You know? Yeah, I mean, they're technically rebuilding. So the fact that they're trying to do both rebuild and then Torts wants to make the playoffs is kind of a strange thing anyhow. And I think at some point, you know what happens with the NHL, you usually get stuck in the mushy middle for a while until you, you know get the rebuild done. So I think Daniel, Daniel Briere, I mean, yeah, wow. he's doing a good job. I mean, I have nothing negative to say about him. I just think um, he might need to sort of branch out a little more on his own though uh, for the next few years. And maybe that means they're going to have to start like thinking independently of John. John has a lot of pull in this organization right now, but there's going to be a time where he's going to have to pull back and these young guys are going to still have to continue to populate the lineup. Right. for at least another year or two. So that's where, you know, I think the, the problem might start to happen. We we love torts, by the way. Yeah. People, the, the image and all that stuff, people don't realize just tremendous supporter of his guys, first of all. He is. Take, well, he's, got them, he's keeping them all jobs. I mean, Rocky Thompson shouldn't even have a job. So John's kept his job. So, yeah. yeah but I mean, his players relationship, he's hard on them. Blah, 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 yeah. blah. But, and, and also with the media. There is no better guy to sh shoot the bull with in a morning skate. I mean, I was covering the well, Rangers. Well, uh, if you're not Larry Brooks, sure. If you're not Larry Brooks. I was covering the Rangers when he was coaching the Rangers. So up in Greenberg at the training center, MSG right. training center, we'd practice mornings, whatever it was, morning skates. We'd talk to him. And, and, and even when I was doing any other team I was working for, great conversation. In fact, I talked to him in Seattle near the very end of the season about the 2004 final. The one referee system, like we've got an um, incredible. He, he loves, loves all that stuff, but if you but if you got it. him on the record, the problem is he has an agenda. If you're a media person, you have to know that, and so sometimes he's going to step on you to make sure that agenda. But like you're saying, everything is true. But then yeah. there's also that other part too. Oh no, there was a couple times where he wasn't happy, and I was just like, yeah, right. I mean, I I get it. Uh, I I I have two of your books sitting you up next Look to me. At you. And uh, one is about the Winter Classic. You wrote a book yep. about the Winter Classics. And there's this guy, Rangers. Yeah, that one's Rangers. out of print at the moment. We own the rights. So me and Adam Rader. So at some point, maybe we'll pop that back out. But the right now, that's great, out of print. The late, late, great John Halligan. Yeah, just a tremendous guy. I'll be forever indebted to that guy. Yeah, Johnny boy. All right, Russ, outstanding stuff. Simmer summer skate on the Philadelphia Flyers. I think we've covered it all. If there's anything, we forget anything, I'll blame you. And um, yeah, yeah, that's fine. Yeah, that's fine. And uh, that's awesome. Enjoy the Garnet Hathaway presser. I mean, I, I will. I will. If, anything, it's, if, if, if they shock us and it's something else, just give me a shout. And I'll, I'll give you a shout. But you got to remember, this is going to be content for my Flyer show. So I'm happy about it. Right. Well, I'll write up an, <laughs> I'll write up an addendum. To the uh, to today's there you go. All right, always a pleasure to see you, and uh, good luck with the, yeah, that picture. Whew, that is one good looking cat. What was that? Ninety six, two thousand one. Yeah, yeah. And I, it's I want to say no. It's in the two thousands. It was probably like two thousand and four. Ooh. Okay. All right. Yeah, we'll say that. Um, have fun. Always a pleasure. See you at the rink. Hopefully, see you in, in the not so distant future. Definitely will. Take Russ care. Cohen from Elite Prospects, Ringside, and other entities, Sportsology, Sportsology.com. Yes. Thank you, sir. Cheers. Cheers.